graduates, tonight is your night. And I'm excited to start that evening by honoring our first graduate speaker. Shereen Washington is graduating from Globe University with an associate's degree in massage therapy. Shereen, a hardworking mother of four, worked as a medical biller for six years at a local hospital. After being downsized, she decided she needed a career change. So Shereen busted off her, or dusted off her backpack, headed back to school for a career in massage therapy. She knows that a career in massage therapy it will help her grow personally and financially. Shereen is opening her own business, Renewed by Touch Therapeutic Massage in Janesville, Wisconsin. Nice plug there. <laughs> she also has the opportunity to work at a local gym or day spa while operating her business. Renewed by Touch is a way for Shereen to use massage to aid people in reducing their pain and stress while enhancing the, their quality of life. Please help me welcome Globe University Madison East student speaker this evening, Shereen Washington. after 20 years. Talk about a hell of a wake up call. <sighs> Saying that I needed to make changes. And I'm very stubborn, but I'm not dumb. So in April 2012, I found myself in the first classroom in like 15 years, where I was a student. On the first day, I was really uncomfortable. I figured I would be the, only, the oldest student on campus, and I claim age all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed going to school full time, I would have to attend classes with children, with people, young people, my children's age. Not that you guys are children. <laughs> I was right, but Globe University embraced me with a genuine feeling of uh, compassion, and the student body and the staff were such an array where I felt comfortable, and I was able to keep an open mind, which is hard to do after 40. Um, <laughs> make new friends and get my associate's of science degree in massage therapy. The staff reinforced what I've been telling my kids their whole lives that if you believe, if you believe it, you can achieve it with focus and hard work. Having passion in instructors was definitely a benefit for me. Being educated by people who really enjoyed what they were doing from English to massage techniques was great. Watching Robin's excitement with muscle function was contagious. Whether it was from making us feel the muscles when we learned the attachment points in kinesiology or making us run up and down the stairs and exercise fits. <laughs> <laughs> and there is no one as excited about resumes as Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> this enthusiasm was found in all of my instructors and I greatly appreciate it. In all the programs there was a vast amount of information to ingest in a short amount of time. And after all these, all those years out of school, being the oldest sibling, having four kids, because I have four, two in college, one in the Navy, and one in high school, it was hard for me to ask for help when I needed it. But Glow was there for me, and I was able to get the assistance I needed it when I needed it. My daughters also helped me a great deal. They helped me edit papers, give me ideas, so that my work was coherent and intelligent sounding. <laughs> they, they also enjoyed calling me from college to ask me if I was doing my homework and not the dishes. <laughs> Moreover, asking lots of questions in class, studying with friends, and volunteering were my saving grace. My friends and family were there rooting me on. You know, my band was always a little iffy, and it still is. So instead of driving to school every day, I caught the bus from Janesville. Three buses, one charter in two city. But I made it to school mostly on time. When my friends and family realized I wasn't going to let my car situation stop me from going to school, I got volunteers. 
And Everett used to bring me to school really, really early, like before campus opened. <laughs> and I would sit outside in the rain and the snow on those benches <laughs> and do flashcards or reread a chapter. My sister and her husband got together and got me a massage table. After that, I never wanted for volunteers to practice on. <laughs> Except maybe when MFR was being taught. <sighs> for everyone who flipped a flashcard, edited a paper, let me practice on their body, or just left me alone because they knew I had homework, thank you. <laughs> what I have confirmed is that there is only one person who can stop me from achieving my dreams, and that's me. So I will continue to get out of my way to achieve my greatness, and I advise all of you to do the same. As Nina Simone says, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling good. <laughs> job, Shereen. At this time, it's my honor to introduce our Madison West graduate speaker, Helen Williams. <laughs> Helen has worked as a certified nursing assistant for 15 years and always had an aspiration to further her education and grow her career within the healthcare field. Three years ago, Helen's venture with Globe University's medical assistant program began. Throughout this experience, she maintained two full-time jobs while providing full-time parenting responsibles to her two boys, Michael and Andrew. Tonight, Helen graduates with honors with her associate's degree in medical assistant and is proud to say this is her first degree ever. On March 31st, Helen's aspiration to grow her career will come to fruition as she will start as a certified medical assistant with Meritor in the cardiology department. Here's what program chair Dan Goblin had to say about Helen. Helen exemplifies what a student with high goals can attain and has become an inspiration to other students. She has balanced her schooling, her family, and her busy work schedule to not only meet the expectations that we set forth at Globe University, but to also surpass them. I took delight in seeing her not only grow as a student, but developing her skills, but also to have see her grow as a professional. Please help me welcome Madison West student speaker this evening, Helen Williams. inspiration to each other in one way or another. I mean, everybody has a story. Everybody has a reason to be here. Mine was simple. I need a change. Sometimes change is good. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew a change in my life would affect so many others? Who knew I'd adopt a whole new family during this process? We laughed and struggled, but most importantly, we'd help each other over those hurdles that were in our path. My grandpa always told me that I would be amazing at anything I tried, as long as I put my heart and soul into it. I didn't believe him when I was growing up. I ended up on the wrong path for a very long time. I thought I was destined for failure. After all, I never even made it past the 10th grade. I had only had dead-end jobs, 
Nothing that would get me anywhere. No real success in life. That was until I walked in the globe, hoping to be somebody, hoping to do something different. Remember that Christmas story about that, those misfit toys? Going to that outcast island? That little elf went there too, because he was an outcast. He didn't want to make those toys, he wanted to be a dentist. <laughs> well, on that island is where I always thought I belonged. I didn't fit in with my family. I was out of place with most of my jobs. I had hunger to do something more than what I was. I didn't want to be a dentist. I wanted to be a nurse. I had a few things working against me in order to start school. First and foremost, I was afraid of change and failing at it. Even though I did get my GED when I was 19, I had no transcripts from the schools that I did attend. I didn't have any of the classes that I needed to start the nursing program. And I was far too busy working two jobs, being a mom to the two greatest guys a woman could ever ask for. And I didn't have the money to start. How was I going to do this? Luckily, I had a really awesome friend, Carl, who nudged me to go. And he kept reminding me that I can do anything I put my mind to. Secondly, I walked into Globe, asked, hey, any way you can help me change my future? And third, sheer stubbornness. Or some call it a will to succeed. I think it's both. Whichever. However you want to look at it on that day, I guess. So, had it not been for my friend nudging me, I'd probably still be saying, well, someday I'll go to school and get out of this rut. But like I said, I've had a few bumps and a couple of setbacks, but I find myself, I found myself after losing my way a few times, and I had a great driving force. There was a need to better my kids' lives. So, here's where that change comes into play. I didn't think I was going to make it here. I just thought someday I'd go to school. But here I am, standing in front of all of you. Some of you are my classmates. Some are my schoolmates. But all of you are the support system that got us this far. As I said before, no, nope, I missed it, sorry. So we all had that one class that we didn't think we'd get through. For me, it was algebra. For some, it was anatomy. <laughs> Others thought medical terminology was treacherous. Whatever your obstacle was, you overcame it. Most likely you had an awesome group of people to help you through those hard times. Mine started with that nudge. Although I would have never made it past algebra had it not been for my son, Michael. <laughs> I also wouldn't have made it through the past three years without my family and friends' support. And I'm sure you couldn't have either. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you sitting and standing in this room. Without you, we sure as heck wouldn't be here. So, as I've said before, I'm honored to be speaking in front of you and thanking you for supporting us, for teaching us, and for helping us all to change and become Superman to someone. We've embraced change, spread our wings, took off, and here we are about to soar into our futures. On behalf of our graduating class, I'd like to say thank you to all of those who have gone through our classes with us. We've had that one classmate that we could count on to compare answers with, to have a quick study session with, or just be a shoulder to cry on when you just didn't think you could go any further. Damn. You pushed me to do my best and taught me that hard work and a smile could get you further than you can ever think. Natalie? Don't know where Natalie is. <laughs> Natalie, 
you are amazing. Just so you know. You helped me to believe that I have more to offer than I thought. Thank you. Kristen? There you are. Kristen, you got me through all that hippa dippa do mumbo jumbo. <laughs> I had some of the best instructors throughout my three years at GLOBE, and I think I can speak, speak for my fellow classmates when I say thank you. None of us would have made it at all if it weren't for you. And since I'm thanking people, I like to thank my grandparents. Although they couldn't make it here today, they were, an insp they were the best inspiration I ever had. They always believed in me, even when I didn't, especially when I didn't. Because of their love, I was able to pick myself off the ground, get off the right path, and get on the right one. And they are the reason why I do everything for my boys. So, whether you're here as a fellow student, family member, or a friend, I can't seem to thank you enough. And I have some more good news. We can help with the little things again. So look how far we've come, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so proud of you. We now can make a difference in someone else's world. Congratulations. You made it. Let's give our student speakers one more raucous round. It is my honor to introduce this evening's keynote speaker, Julie Lombardo. Julie serves as the President, Chief Clinical Officer, Care Provider, and Compliance Program Director at Capital Physical Therapy locations in Verona and Madison. She is a board certified orthopedic clinical specialist, board certified women's health clinical specialist, and holds a certificate of achievement in pelvic physical therapy. She's a former member of the University of Wisconsin Physical Therapy School Admissions Board and has been recognized with the prestigious 40 Under 40 Award by Greater Madison in Business Magazine. In her spare time, Julie enjoys water skiing, weightlifting, running, and spending time with her husband and two boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Lombardo. Wow, thank you. I first want to just start off by saying I'm so honored to be here tonight. This is a very exciting day for you guys, and I'm really thankful that you allowed me to be a special part of it. Um, as I stand here at 41 years old, it's just hard for me to believe that it's been nearly 20 years since I was sitting in that seat. But I remember what you're feeling, and I remember how excited you are, and I remember that I was, at the time, feeling like the world's in front of me, diploma in my hand, ready to go out and get that first professional job. And I know what it takes to get to that point, and I also know that it typically doesn't happen without some bit of adversity along the way. So let's go back 20 years, 1994, when I was deciding what I wanted to do with my life. And at that point I said, I want to be a physical therapist. So April, April 1994, I got home, hastily ripped off, open a letter, and it read. Is this blessing? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And it read, thank you for your interest in our physical therapy program. We received many interesting and excellent applications, only some of which we were able to accept this year. We reviewed your application very carefully and note several strong features, however. So you know where that went. So I didn't get in. Was I let down? You bet. So I failed. And my first, th first thoughts were, gosh, what am I going to tell everybody? What do, what do I do for the next year? Should I just give up? So, 
I thought about it and I said, no. I want to be a physical therapist. So I worked harder. I took more volu or volunteered more hours and I took more classes. And then on April 2nd, 1995, I came home, ripped open another letter. But this time, it read, we are excited to offer you a position in the physical therapy program. And that's how my therapy journey began. So, okay, let's fast forward 10 years. This is 2004, and by this time, I had had seven or eight years of physical therapy experience under my belt. I had worked my way into a management position, and I said, you know what, I really want to start a private practice here in Madison. I want to open a business. And I wanted to name it Capital Physical Therapy. So, at the time, there were many there were many naysayers, and many of which were friends of mine, but, and then maybe they meant the best, but here's what I heard. It'll never work here. All the private practices went out of business when the HMOs came to town in the 80s. It's too risky. If it, if it were easy, don't you think that everybody would own private practices? And I listened as those comments came in, and it wasn't easy. And when I opened our doors, on September 1st, 2004, there were days the phone didn't ring. <laughs> and I feared failure. So, I worked harder. I had employees quit with short notice, but I worked harder. I had sleepless nights over not making payroll, but I worked harder. And then when the local insurances came and said, you know what, we have enough therapists in town that we just don't need any more to see our HMO patients, our group worked harder. And we, we asked our patients to write letters of support for us, and we asked the doctors that loved what we were doing to, ask, or to write letters of support for us. And we continued day in and day out to provide the best patient care that we possibly could with the most awesome customer service that we could and good things started to happen for us. But I want to go back to adversity because each one of us has gone through some of this. Some of you sitting here are first graduation or first college graduates in your whole family and you should be so proud of yourself. Some of you are single parents, some of you have juggled jobs and spouses and families and some of you have had to start and stop and start again and now you're here. And some of you have just sailed right through, but it is inevitable that at some point in your career you will face adversity. But don't let that adversity stop the momentum that has gotten you to the point that you are sitting here today on graduation day. Now, I did not come from a, a privileged family. My, my dad has a high school degree. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm more emotional than you guys. <laughs> I've been so honored to be here. This is very sweet of you guys. But <clears throat> I will get through this too, just like you. Two speakers. But um, my dad has a high school degree. My mom went one year to college. But they taught me the value of hard work and honest work. And they taught me that in the face of adversity, that I had to put my big girl pants and do something on and do something about it because giving up was not an option. So, fast forward 10 more years to today. Capital Physical Therapy is celebrating its 10th year in business this September 1st, and we are now a thriving practice. We have two locations, one in Madison and one in Verona, and we have eight therapists who serve hundreds of patients every single week, even the ones with HMO insurances. And, and we, have survived, or we have succeeded, I believe, because we are so passionate about what we do for people. And, and we keep, I believe we keep our focus on what the public wants, and that is value, service, and results. And I know that good things can happen for each one of you guys with hard work and honest work. And I'm living proof of that, because who would ever think, who would ever think that the girl that was turned down to get in, and turned down for not one, but two jobs that I really, really wanted, <laughs> would ever go on to be on the admissions committee and honorary faculty at the University of Wisconsin Physical Therapy School, 
go on to get two advanced board certification degrees in our field. To be granted the prestigious 40 Under 40 Award through the In Business Magazine, the Chamber's Business of the Month, and I have the amazing opportunity to teach you, the University of Wisconsin Medical School residents about physical therapy services when they come and shadow at, at our clinic every year, um, and then be asked to speak at the Globe University commencement. I tell you these things not to brag about myself, but to let you know and remind you that these things are all within your reach. My journey has not been without its fair share of bumps in the road. But each one of you have the tools to be able to do what I've done and create your own future. So, my message to you on your graduation day is this. And it's a quote by the late Robert H. Schuler. Commit yourself to a dream. Commit yourself to a dream. Nobody who tries to do something great but fails is a total failure. Why? Because he can always rest assured that he succeeded in, most, in life's most important battle. He defeated the fear of trying. So, this is just the beginning of your career. And you guys get to paint the rest of that picture. But make sure you think about what you want that to look like and go out and create it. Whatever your degree is, whether it's IT, medical assistant, massage therapy, your MBA, accounting, vet tech, whatever it is, do your job with love and passion and work hard and be honest, but do not be afraid to fail. If you just keep plugging away at your dream, good things will happen for you. So thank you and good luck to each of you.